Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show down here on south coast of Cornwall. I'm just loading up. I've already got the boat down on a mooring, or not a mooring, on one of those pontoons. Actually paid extra this time, which I find a bit of a shock. We're going to see if the system's work, working. And also I've got one of these, look, like a sort of, a, like a, I've got to call it a yachty barrow. Like a carp barrow, but you can uh, put loads of, loads of gear in there, take it down the pontoon we hope and see if it's going to work out and then we're going to get you guys out on the boat fishing just like it could be a decent day and look that's how i like to see the flags absolutely limp all right let's get going already got the boat in the water last night there were tons of people around they getting up six o'clock in the morning gets you out on the water and a view like this so normally i'll be over there getting on the slip fighting the uh, rubber boats. Absolutely glassy calm. And last night I saw uh, this very small bass or mackerel going onto some uh, bait fish. Idyllic setting at the moment before the people come. It's always idyllic before the people are there. No, no, that one's not mine. The little yellow thing on the outside there is mine. I have to get negotiate my way across this guy. It's always a sign that the weather's going to change when you get all this dew. This has got to be cleaned off so I can see where I'm going. That's a sign that autumn is just around the corner. It's also a sign. Usually, it's going to be a hot day. No d misters on my boat. Dust, dust, dust. The maid's not been in. Right. Okay, well I'm now out at sea. Not a huge distance off, I guess about six miles. Only about six miles, but the wind's off the north, so I stopped a little bit of short short of where I would want to normally go, so the wind's going to take me off. They're small tides, not great for sharking. Uh, it was what they call neap tides, very small, not much movement. I've got flood out here at the moment, so it's pushing me up the coast to the east, north. So I'm going to go down and out, I think. I'm not sure until I put the bags in. I think it's predominantly going to be the wind that uh, sets my drift today. So bag over the side. I was going to do some power chumming, which is towing the chum bag along trying to make a bit of a drift but I'm not I think there's enough breeze here just to move me along might take me an hour or two to get a fish out right baits in the water time okay now what I've done bucket of frozen chum it's only a small one I'll start with a small one first I'm putting it in the mesh bag which is the onion set we normally put it in and hang it over the side but sometimes well quite often actually a shark will come up and he'll grab this bag and rip it open now if he does that you've lost all your chum, all your attraction. A, you fed him, B, you've got no more chum left. So this is just a big paint pot there, look, or whatever it is. Um, I'm going to put that over the side. Dripping everywhere. And that stops any shark biting it. If I'm not looking or filming, this is actually Wayne's, he makes these up. Good idea, real good idea. Mostly for blue sharks, don't need as much of the pool beagles. And you just hang over the side like this. Just tie it on properly, Graham. Properly, properly, and you can see all that chum comes out there. If a shark does come up and I'm not looking, don't see it, and bites, then hopefully, you know, he's not going to go through the bag. But just look at that cloud there, that's beautiful, lovely, clear water. The downside I've got it's been so hot 29 degrees yesterday. It's thawed that out, so that's going to go really quickly. So I'm just going to use that one first. I'm hoping to use this. This, guys. Yes, that's right. Isn't that silly? 
it's a pen rod. I don't think anybody in the world has caught a blue shark on a pen rod, but it's got to be the right size. It's got to be about a small one, about 15, 20 pounds to give me any sort of a chance of catching it. But that's what I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do is put a teaser bait out first, just a bait basically with no hook in it. So if a shark comes and pulls, then I can, you know, just pull them out, pull it straight out of his mouth and hopefully I can spot him and then either put the camera underwater to show you guys or drop a bait back on the pen rod. That is today's plan. I'll probably all go pear shaped, but there you go. What a setting. I'm figuring the wind's going to push me. I can tell by the slick I'm going to go offshore all the time. And here I've already got some customers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those boys know something's going on here. They know I've put some chum, some smell in the water. If they know, the guys down there hopefully should know. And I've got a mackerel line over already, just in case, because I'm really tight on bait. I might even have to try and catch a whiting for hook bait. So, the scenario is this. I've got my rod. I'm going to call it my tester rod here. The last time I came out, I got sharks eating the float off the surface. I've got a chunk of meat there. I hope you see this in the camera. A chunk of meat there, light line, like 15 pound line. A weight, I'm going to lower that over the side. The rest of this is 50 pound line. The, the, the piece of meat I've got there is trout meat and it floats and these guys will have it. Then I've got an old float here stopped by a rubber band there so as you can see it slides up and down the line till the rubber band touches the top of it and then it's all set, it's set at that depth. This is how I'd be shark fishing normally but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this back, you can see how slow the drift is Wow, it's going to take a while to get anything in this chum slick. I maybe, maybe should have done a bit of power chumming. But hey, how it's done now. I'm going to run this back and I'm just going to leave it. Just on a light drag. And if a shark takes that, it just pull that bait off. And at least I will know there's one in the area. And then I can start chumming a little bit heavier. Try and draw him close to the boat. And maybe get that rod at him. Get that pen rod. Now... If there's a shark comes and it's like a big one, it's like 70 pounds, I don't think that's happening on a, on, a, on a pen rod. I've got my two shark lines there, but I'm going to try and wait until I see one first before I put any big lines out. If I put the big lines out, I'm going to catch everyone that swims up here before he even gets to the boat. So this is going to put the tester out there and hopefully, look, he could swim past it and just turn up here. It's not to say he might even not, he might, he's just certainly never seen a trout before, has he? <laughs> no way! Right, hopefully he'll take it. I have actually had a 200 pound bull beagle on a trout head. I think we'd had a couple of tope and a, we're waiting for the uh, tide. Dozing off as you do, very, very similar to today. Uh, just something made me open my eyes and I just saw this fin cut through the water going down, round the back. Just by luck I had left in a bucket here some old heads and stuff because I've been chumming with uh, trout carcasses and kept the heads back. So I just wound in, put a great big chunk of trout head, and I remember tossing it out there, just a piece of rubbish, and he sucked, came up and sucked it straight back. So I know they take trout, that they eat anything. That was a poor beaver shark, about 200. We won't be seeing any of those today. Let's get that preset button. That's better. You've got a little preset there, guys, in case you didn't know. You can actually adjust what's called the strike drag here. All right, that should be okay. I want it light, I want it nice and light. Let's put him there. Absolutely nothing on the mackerel yet, on the mackerel feathers. I could do with a couple of fresh baits in fairness. Sometimes they come right up in this chum feeding. I could do with a fresh mackerel, if this makes sense, to cut up some mackerel strips to put on here. Because mackerel will take strips of bait as well as well okay now fresh bait I really need I think I'm gonna have to drop a line to the bottom for whiting guys I just seen a pull on the shark float I just seen a pull on the shark float I've got a bite on the whiting rod but I've just seen that float pull under I've had a garfish a couple of small joey mackerel get the head cam on is it gonna kick off I definitely definitely saw the rod pull over 
and you can see on this one here get myself clips up here if I can and I definitely had a pull so I'm going to shake this up I definitely saw some that pull on that I'll be surprised if I don't pull that in and there's nothing on it I think I've got a small fish on this one float is just back there okay, you guys probably won't see it so I'm going to keep scanning keep looking Smith Smith where are you keep an eye out for this shark forget the homework leave the homework for a minute look after Mr Pullen shark see if you can spot it that boy is totally useless first let's check that shark line I know I had a pull on that by shaking it up there all those particles coming out so if there was a shark there let's check this bait that bait's gone that means Mr Shark's in town worth checking 90% sure I felt a pull on that or saw it saw it out of the corner of my eye yeah, bait's still there trout is still there I guess it could have been something like a big garfish because guys told me there's some really big garfish here Let's run it back again. Give it another 15 minutes, I'll put another bag out, I think. There we go. The other way of catching white, and of course it's just a set of feathers, a set of mackerel feathers, but I double up here and, and just bait them, just put a bit of bait on them, drop them down, drag them along the bottom. Looks a bit weird because I've put the weight right by the bait because I want it the white in really a sort of bottom feeding species so if you're going to catch you're going to catch on the bottom say two hooks because obviously that's the deepest one um, failing that you want a long running trace going along the bottom um, but the benefit with feathers you can also get mackerel and you can uh, come up and down quite quickly and can drop down quickly without tangling because the lead's at the bottom and it's pulling the feathers down so there's nothing to go up and spin This is the sort of fish you can catch by changing to a running ledger and keeping that bait going hard along the bottom. A really, really nice white in here. So there you got the boom, the bead, the swivel. I've got 50 pound mono, they're not bothered by 50 pound mono. I've got two hooks on there, one on the standoff snood there. And then at the bottom, you can see, yeah, I'll get him up there. Just get him round in the sunshine. Hopefully you can see this guy's really nice big whiting. This is a summer whiting that you get down here in the West Country. That'd be a that'd be a keeper, I'd say that one. And you can see the little, hopefully you can see the pin teeth there. He's absolutely throated that. There we go, let's get him in there along with that garfish. At least I've got a bit of fresh bait there. And that's the difference. You can either use the mackerel feathers, and if your mackerel feathers are all chewed up, guys, don't worry. Uncle Graham's going to show you the way to renovate those mackerel feathers. On the hook bait I've just got there a sliver each of fresh garfish. That last whiting came on garfish. When you put it in the water just lay it down so the boom turns around and if you're drifting this way you want the trace flowing that way and the lead's here and it'll all lay out straight and go down on the bottom. Don't let this one down too fast. I have got a longer boom on there Looks like I'm going to need some more chum in there as well to freshen that up in a minute. Let's give it a shake while we're going down. I think I'll put out 
my main tubs here. I'm definitely not going to get a full day's uh, shark drift, shark chumming in here. I've used the old rubbish first, now I've got to put the good stuff out, but the fact it's thawed out is a real pain because it's going out fast. I'm going to have to what we call double bag it. It's the only way I can keep a constant smell. Not on me, not on me, in the water. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's a bird pecking the float, look. Show them off, eh? You twat. My God, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17 seagulls, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 seagulls have got faith in me catching something. I know why they're sitting around here, because they saw that whiting come over. The idiot head here wants to eat my shark float. You silly boy. Listen, they could damage a line, that's why I don't, uh, don't really relish them pecking away at my float because they might just nip the line. They are some... That's why we have people serving food and driving cars and they're just paddling around pecking floats. Well, got another good whiting on here. I mean, I'm going to be using these for bait, but they're good at eating fish. This reel needs some major surgery. This is a big, big chunky oh look at that one boys that one is what that lead doesn't whack me around the ear that one i think could agree it's a pretty nice looking whiting so they're down there so you can amuse yourself in between the shots i'm kind of i'm kind of amazed that i haven't seen a shark yet i've been going eight nine two hours and you'd normally expect in about an hour to see one so I'm... Good morning, sir. I'm trying to make a film here. So I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to bang it on the head and keep it. Might fry it up when I get back. See how busy the restaurant is. If it's busy, I could have a cook up. Thank you. So I'm going to drop down again. I'll tell you what I find strange. They tell me there's loads of bait fish in shore. They say, oh, no trouble catching mackerel. I've caught two. And those feathers have been down two hours, up and down, and a little strip of bait on them. Yes, I'm out deep, and the other people are in shore. Is there too much bait fish now? You know us fishermen, we've got to moan all the time. We've got to find an excuse for something. I know conditions against me, small tides, slow drift, I know that, for sharks. But I'm kind of surprised there's not more action around. And it's sort of confirmed to me by the fact that Look, I've caught a couple of white and a garfish and two mackerel, and look, I've got so many birds around me. I can only catch them so fast, can't I? Goodness me, complaints all round. Well, oh, float's gone, float's gone, float's gone. I've got a white and orange going, the float's just gone down. I don't know if it's a garfish or whether it's a shark. Just going to do a little talk about. Whiting, now I've got a whiting on here, I've got to get him out, because that was definitely, I saw the rod go, I don't know, I don't know why they're not taking it, if I don't get this whiting up, if there is a shark there, I've seen nothing, I was just going to say, I'm going to have to put, what's this, what's this, what's that? It's only Mrs Smith, it's only Mrs Smith, this is mother. Dogfish, quite a big dogfish, wing hooked, <coughs> hooked in the corner there. Well, how unlucky is he? I definitely saw that rod go down, but I think they might be those big garfish. There's a the dogfish, people. Chuck him back. I'm looking, I can't see any fish. I might actually take a gamble and put my two shark rods out with uh, whiting on. And just, if I get one, I get one. At least I get to catch something. And then if one does come past the shark baits, then I might be able to see it and put that pen rod out for it. And as you can see, folks, I'm still going, well, nearly, I'm still going with the same bait. So do not neglect using a piece of nice silver garfish for bait, because it can be a good bait. I'll call sharks on garfish, it's not, not a problem. I reckon there's some big garfish back there, you know. I wonder if I put that float out with a sliver of mackerel 
that way I could catch the garfish, use your brain gram, I could catch the garfish right, and if I had a shark take, it would still tell me, you know, if there's a fish there. Might be worth doing, let's get this one back. Oh boys, I just wound the float in, the lead's there. Not only is it gone, it's bitten clean off. You can see the angle point on it. There is a shark there, he just will not come to the boat. That's two takes I've had back there that I now know are sharks. So I think I've got to put my shark line out and just take pot luck that one comes past it and actually does put me in the zone with the pen rod. If not, at least I get to show you guys a shark. But you can see how that testing rig works. I've got to put one with a hook in it now. Right, I've got my shark float. What am I going to put on for bait? I know, of course, I won't use whiting, I rather like. I like the flash of this, to be honest. A piece of garfish. I've caught on it before. I mean, they've got a green bone in them. And people don't uh, actually eat them. They used to be frightened of the green bone. No, they're supposed, to be, they're supposed to be reasonable eating. I don't think you can see that there. Can you see the green? The green of the bone. Oh, green bones. Now, we'll just see if Mr. Shark is at home with a proper bit of shark gear. I can't see him. Why is he hanging back? Strange. We'll find out shortly. Put a little nick in there. So that when you pull this tight, the hook just hangs nice and flat. Now, I'm trying to remember what depth that was at. I'm pretty sure that shark's tracking us, I've got to be honest. Pretty sure he's tracking us. Whoa, whoa, what's that over there? Is that a fish? He might, he, he's there, there he is, there's a shark. Oh, Smith, give us a break. I've got to switch Smith off, sorry boy. Right. 500 lines by tomorrow morning on my desk. I must not interrupt Mr. Pullen when he's just spotted a shark. There is 100% a shark there, boys. Right, I just seen it. Oh, here he comes. There he is. There he is. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. No sod off, birds. He's there, and that is seriously pen rod size. I've got to get this rod up. What a good job I didn't dot that one back. What a good job. He's been tracking and tracking and tracking this boat. Well, I've got Mr. Whiting safely up. Unfortunately for him, he's bait size, but I'm going to stick. Where's he gone, the shark? Okay, so you know what I'm doing? I'm only up to the limit of this called. I'm going to bait up with a pen rod. I'm going to have to have a backup, what's called running a chain. That means I'm going to take a second pen rod, and if I look like getting spooled, I clip this rod to the other rod, throw it over, throw the first rod over, fight it with this, so I don't get spooled out. So I have absolutely no conception. I'm going for the world record shark on a pen rod. Has it ever been done before? I kind of doubt it. So, piece of bait. Here we go. I've seen this shark in the water, but I just hope it's not too big. There he is. There he is. Oh no, it's clear off birds, clear off, clear off, clear off. Use your brain. Psst, shove off. Okay. Okay. I can't see the shark. The line is obviously sinking. I don't want to put a float on this if I can help it. If I put a float on it's going to be extra drag, you know. So there it is, there's the rod. It's tiny, it is. Something like 10, 10.99 a pen rod. Let's just see if we can get a take. I'll tell you what we'll do guys. I'm going to put that on my head. So I've got the head cam and I've got both hands free. I'm kind of nervous about putting this in a rod holder. Let's switch off a second. Actually, I'm going to put this, this bit of juice in there. It might just, do you remember I just saved this? It might just spark him up, bring him in a bit closer. I 
don't see him anymore. Do you not see him? I can't run it back like I would normally run it back because the further I run it back it will sink too deep. Give me a pretty good fight with that piece of bait on. I'm not going to break the rod, I'm going to throw it out. Come on Mr Shark, show yourself. I just need to put it in front of his face. That's a weird cast Graham. All gone very quiet. I've had a major shake up there. You can probably see all the oil particles there. When you do that, it either pulls them in if they're really hungry, but he's nervous. So I kind of figure he's going to be laying back. And that big cloud will sort of keep him back there. He's going to be out my range for a little while. Got him on, boys. Got him on, got him on, got him on. Got him on. I've got the head camera screwed up. He's spooling me out. Oh, Jesus. He's gone. He's gone. Lost him, guys. I'd say he's rolled up the trace and bust me off. He's rolled right up the trace and bust me off. Well, wouldn't you, Adam and Eve, it? Messing with the camera has cost me so many fish, I cannot tell you. Cannot tell you how many fish it's cost me. He's gone through, summer's given there. Well, that's so annoying. I'm, not, I'm just still not sure what happened. I've lost so many fish. Messing around with the camera, just trying to get you guys something different, uh, and you end up paying a price. I'm not going to put a tester out. I've now left uh, a shark trace on here. I think it just went through by the wire. It was 175 pound test wire, which I normally fish 600. Whether he went through that, but I got the whole rig back. I haven't lost any line. He did not break the rod. He did not break the trace. The rubbing line, something bizarre happened with him. Maybe a crimp pulled. I don't know. I normally knock those. But anyway, we've got to try and salvage something. So the pen rodders have to go on an equal footing with the big boys club now. I had the fish hooked up. I had three quarters of a spooler line out. I cannot, cannot believe it. So let's get serious, as they say and out goes a piece of garfish. Now, there's every chance I feel he might come back. It depends, he had a good old scrap and put on there. It's probably spooked him, because he was spooky in the first place. But I'm gonna run this one back and see if I can put my two shark rods out and I just fish this. To see, the downside is I don't want to hook a big shark on. I don't want a big shark on the pen rod. I need really to be able to see the size of the shark coming in. That's the general, general idea. And the fish is pretty shallow as well. Clip it in. A very, very slow drift. The same fog is coming in over there already. I've lost, there's a ship up there. I've lost that, that's gone. It's bizarre weather, honestly, isn't it? It's a weird weather. I don't see fog bank coming back there. I've lost visibility over there, so. Just have to take pot luck. Come on, boys, I just want one shark. It's not a lot to ask, is it, really? Well, it is on a pen rod, I suppose, but... I'll put another uh, fresh half block of chum in there. Hopefully I can draw something up. Plenty of oil on the surface. It's sort of that direction it's heading. I'll have to go back to whiting fishing at this rate. Hang on, where's my float gone? Oh, it's up there. Put this shark right up the top here. That should. It's sitting up there, and I think I'm going to whack another one out as well. So it's pen rod versus seek and destroy. Getting tugged on this one. I'm getting tugged on this one. Let's get the head cammed up. Let's get head cammed up. He's tugging, he's tugging, he's tugging. 
actually. I think he's got it. Oh God, he's got it. Right, lock and load time. Has he dropped it? Now he's on. He's on. Just as I dropped all the rods down. Hard to believe. I've got it in the hole where I get sorted out here, people. I've got to get this feathers up. Yes, I dropped everything down. Would not surprise me at all. If this one isn't the one that took me before. Why do I have two left-handed gloves? Look at that bag and I Let's see if he's still there. I think he's still there. Uh, you're still there. My money is on this having my pen rod trace in the end of it. Come on, Mr. Shark. This is on the mankiest scared known to man. Oh. Okay, maybe he's not so small. Clicker coming off for the clicker haters. What a weird fight. Getting lots of twangs. Look, lots of. Ooh. It's a 50 pound blank, this one. It's a 50, actually a 50 80. It's rated. I think he's twisted and tangled. I hope he doesn't roll up the line and go through the trace. His blues are known to do. I need a break big time. Probably switch the camera off now, my luck. Come on, it really is twanging away there. I'll set this one quite deep as well. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Twanging away. Oh, come on. No sign of colour yet. I got colour. I got me some deep colour. Mainly suntan. The other thing I normally screw up with is this. So I'm going to put that up there. Here he comes. He's a coming. Hmm. Well, if he comes off, he comes off. I've got the trace. Put him up, take a look at him. That is such a penrod size. That is such a penrod size, people. Yeah, you ain't going nowhere, bud. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I see no other traces in there. I think that's a different shark. I think that's a, I think that's a totally different shark. My T-bar is right in there. I think he's got to come aboard and beat my boat to pieces. Up you come, buddy. Oh, shit. Get, get, get. Come on. He's here. That's a fresh fish. That's not the one I lost. That is not the one I lost. There's a shark. I'm going to get it straight back over the side. Yes. One in the boat. Perfect size for the pen rod. You can see how it was. I put the big rod out. No problem catching on the big rod. But I need to see the size of the shark I'm targeting. That's the truth of it. But listen, hey ho. A shark is a shark. Well, it's got to be quiet now, guys. Slicked off. It's a breeze. Enough breeze to push a boat along. Uh, feathers down. Pen rods out. Two shark rods are out. Watching lines out. I can do no more. I got the old girl on for a blue, so I got the kettle on there, and we all know what that means. 
It's like having a flask of tea. The minute you pour a flask out, bang, the rod goes over. So I wonder if something will actually go off here, whether I'm going to get a, a whiting bite, some mackerel on the feathers. Ha! Dream on. Um, or indeed a shark one. It's a funny old day. It's good weather. It's weird though, you know, this. it's not wind again. I think it might be wind against tide. I can't work these tides out here, so I've not got much more of the flood going. And when it ebbs and the wind's with it, I should be flying. It's going to take me close to shore. And then I probably have to call it quits. It would be nice to get one more shark. I'd love to get one of the pen rod, of course I would, especially that size. That would be perhaps past the limit, but there's it's a chance. But I need really to see the fish. Anyway, cup of tea. Can't beat it in the sea. If it doesn't fall off there. And then fingers crossed, I've got about maybe two hours of chum left. So not too bad at all. And look at my view. Look at the view from my office, people. Not bad, is it? And the thing is with sharking, once you set up like this, there's nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. You just put your lines out set your floats, set your baits, make sure that chum is constant and then just wait. And the fact that seagull's taken off from there might mean a shark's come up that chum slick there. Look, he's flying. I've seen that so many times. And I hear brew a bubbling. Boys, I mean there is a bejesus of a blue shark here. There is, I don't want to go in. Oh, come on. There he is, there he is. Look at the size of that shark, man. Holy schmoly, that is a big blue shark. He's just heading out there. How come? You can see what I mean. There's my shark float, shark float. I'm going to bring this pen rod in. That is a no-go pen rod job, that one. That is a big blue shark. I better have a shake up. I told you if I made that cup of tea, if I made the tea, something bizarre has happened. I'm going to click off and get myself sorted, guys. I've got whited lines, mackerel lines. I've got a real mess. And I've got my tea. Well, I'm mic'd up. Guys, just trust me, this is a really good blue shark. This is a big, oh, he is. He's just off the stern. Which one do I bring in? I need to bring a, oh, is that Lee gonna reach? I need to bring a rod in close. He's gone on the same piece of the stern. I'm gonna pull right in here. I'm gonna shallow this one up as well. That's a big R shark. Swimming very, very slowly. Here he is! Oh man! Holy sh! Holy sh! Look at the size of this one, people! F hell! <laughs> Fuck it! I've got to get the. Let's get this jump over! Oh my god! Get this. Have some of this, sweetie. I don't even have the cameras on. Hello? Anybody in there? Might be a bit of bad language there, because trust me, this is a big shark. I've caught a few, and this is a biggie. I don't know where he's gone. He circled the boat. I'm hoping he's going to come back. How oh, can you imagine that on a bed rod? Here he comes. Shit, shit. Check that puppy out there. Check that one up there. Mamma mia! I'm hoping you guys see that, it's a big shark. Look at his tail come up then. Swimming quite fast. I might have spooked him leaping up, shouting and pointing. He's going to circle, he's going to come back here. Oh, it's great to see a shark. Here he comes down the waves, look at this one. Oh, I can see him with ordinary glasses, I hope you can see him. Look at the power built up in that machine. Look at his fin came out. Here he comes, here he comes, you get more confident. Oh, look, 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 look at this! Oh, sh Oh my God, dare I put this camera on? Look at the fin! Look, look, look! Oh, he's taking tiny bits. Here we go. Look at this one. Oh my God, he's going to eat the propeller. Look at this one. <laughs> he's going to bite the boat in a minute. Can you guys see him down there? Look at this, come up on the top. That is worth waiting hour upon hour for. He comes, here he comes, here he comes. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Look at this, look. How can I tie a loop in that? I'm just about to pitch that bait. This one is as rotten as you could want. There he is, he's cutting the surface. 
I'm going to stand up here really dangerously. Heave him out, he comes. He's over there. I'm hoping you guys see him. Oh, big shark, big shark. Oh, he's seen it. I think he's seen it, guys. I think he's seen it. Can you make him? I'll tell you when he's got it. Oh, he's running against him. Oh, sh He's on. He's on. He doesn't even know he's hooked. That is a big ass blue shark. Get down, Graham. Don't go in. This is this is a big fish. He doesn't even know he's hooked. Hand fed by the totally awesome fishing show, and I'm hoping I press the right button. I might need a butt pad on this one. Ah. Oh. Yes, I thought you might know something's wrong there. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet, boys. It's a big shark. Check the bend out. It's a fish. Just take Mr. Clicker off to. We don't want to upset anybody, do we? There's always somebody on there. Ready to pounce on that keyboard. Ho oh, oh. It's not enough watching free films, is it? No, for nothing. And you've got the off button. But you have to have a bitch and a gripe because you don't like clickers. I like clickers, they tell me there's a shark on the line. Oh no, what was that went through the rings? What was that just gone through the rings? What was that? That was... Oh no, he's coming. That's what he's doing, guys. There was a little nick on that line. Oh dear. Tell you what we're going to do, boys. Just put him in the hold of a split second. Put the clicker on, sorry, because I want to know what's happening. Now I've got hooks in there. I don't want him wrapping. I'm going to put butt pad on for this kitty. Right, butt pad's on. Ah. Oh. Just put it slightly to one side of the uh, wedding accoutrements and just work that fish slowly. As long as I can get him up, he thrashes around, I can hold him really hard. I don't really fancy bringing one this big in the boat, I've got to be honest. I could tag it, I have got tagged, but it's normally two of a shark fishing. Much safer. Man alone shark fishing. Exciting, but. I uh, just got to be a bit careful, people. He's turning the boat, this one. The other thing I'm doing is making sure that... Not that I'm greedy, you understand, but there might be a second one. I don't want to break a four-hour slick. OK. I didn't feel that little nick. I'm fairly sure there's a nick on there. I won't be going pull wiggle shark fishing if, if there's a nick on that line, for sure, when we start catching three or four hundred pounders. That's rough there as well. Just gonna take my time with this one. Much easier. I have got our fighting harness as well. I won't put that on just yet. I just want to get him up. I can hold him really hard, and some of the hooks I use are just straight Shaughnessy's, and the hook will bend out, so I'm not really worried. And if not, I just snip the hook and it rusts out. If I can get the hook out, I will do, but I want to get him up so you guys get a real appreciation. And this is definitely not penrod material. There's the colour. All those who follow us, if you see my hand keep coming up, it's because I'm trying to adjust the camera. There's the trace. There's the accident. It's waiting to happen. Puh, flies as well around. This fish is no way done. Click them off, everybody. That's so cool seeing them come up like that because you know they're hunting you. If you were in the water, all that smell. They will track you down, hunt you down, and if you're in the tropics, they will eat you. Yeah, this is a good fight on this fish. Guys, I might just click this off for a second and save battery. That one's on. You sort of take it for granted when there's two of you in a boat. Somebody else will hold the glove where you can get your hand in. But when you're on your own, Watch him go around the pop as well. 
Oh, loaded. Locked and loaded. I think I'm gonna come around this way, take him around, take him around, take him around. You get fish that go side to side of from you, you know they're good ones. Yeah, that's a big shark. Turning me in circles. Been fighting him for a while, guys. Woo. In this warm sunshine. Getting a bit warm now. There's my trace, and you can see my sliding float. And he's just going from side to side, which is always a sign of a big fish. There's no way he's done. I'm going to attempt to get hold of him on the, on the leader. But he's going to go. Okay. I've got hold of him. I'm going to bring him up. Don't wrap it, Graham. Don't wrap it. Don't wrap it. Hoo, 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 hoo. What do you think, boys? What do you think? Look at the size of that puppy. Seven, eight feet long and about to go ballistic. I told you it's a big one, boys. That's a big blue. That's about 130. Wow. Mister, look at the jaws on that. He's not coming in the boat. See if I can tee bar him off. He's going to go nuts again in a minute. Look at those jaws. Wow. I don't want to get too close because he rears up. That's a big one. Hopefully, I've only got the small barb on it. Here we go. Try it. Oh, sweet man. Sweet. Look at him go. Look at him go. Unbelievable. About 130 pounds of English blue shark. Get in. But it's not pen rod material. Whew. Wow. All you fishermen know it's absolutely deadly when you start pouring a flask of tea. And look, my tea's down here. It's probably stone cold. But was it worth it? I just had to feel it the minute I try and make a cup of tea. Got my name on it in case I forget. It's only me on the boat. One man alone, he has to put a felt pen with his name on. Oh man, I'm sweating now. So pleased to get you guys a good fish. That was a big, big blue shark. That was a good one. For English waters, that was a good one. Still got one right out there. I think, up there. So there's always a chance. I just got to eat this last bit of chum out. I wonder, I wonder if you got the take. I wonder if you guys actually physically got the take. You can see my chum stick up there. That was so cool. So cool seeing him in the water. Man alone in a boat. Strikes again. Tea time, boys. Tea time. <laughs> hey, the float's gone. Oh, I can't get clipped up in time. Hang on a minute, it's going to shake. Everything there. Is that Smith? Yes, sir, it's me. I've done all those lines for you. Oh, okay, you can go home now. He's got it, buddy. He has got it. He's on. He's on. I haven't got the butt pad on. Go. Normally how you bend your, burn your fingers, boys. Get that head camera right back right there for you. Guessing to get such a mess with this filming. And there's that little speck on that line again. Ooh, 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 nurse. Bring the water. Not waste any time. Hmm. I'm gonna have a sandwich by the time this one finishes running. That butt pad. There, I chance putting it in the holder. Let's get this on. Don't want him rolling. Do not want him rolling. The fog bank coming in. Oh, he's most definitely still there. Hey. Oh, he got a smack in the chop scent. Right. 
Click her off. Stealth mode. Oh no. Whiting line. Oh, mackerel feathers. Oh no. Traces up, boys. Uh. Let's see what it looks like first. I feel he's going to go again. I feel he's going to go again. I need my gloves. No, he's about 45. 45. Let's get him in. And sort him out then. Just need that wire glove. Now, you can probably realise just how big that other shark was. Don't eat my best float. He's in. And there we go. Get him back and he should hopefully see him swim away. He's going under the boat. Oh. I thought he was going to come out the other side. Gone. Whew. Back to the tea. Well, boys, got, I've drifted in amongst the wreck. I'm going inshore, so I'm just about to move and go out for about an hour or so with a little bit of chum I've got left. And I've got a. Well, just check this whiting out. I thought it was a small cod. Oh, let's get this one over. Check that whiting. That one is a super big whiting. That is a real good eating fish. Look at that one. Lovely big tail. Well, what shall I do? Shall I go out again? I don't feel there's going to be any sharks this close. I'm really close to shore now. Well, not really close, like two miles, maybe three. Foghorn going out there. Do I run out and chance it with the fog? It looks lovely at the moment, but they've give, they have given fog. I might just give it a go for an hour. Let's get this guy in the fish box. Oh no, shark here, shark, shark. Oh my God, it's me saying it's not I'm too close to shore. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, all you people on the beach over there, there's a shark. Just check this puppy out. I'm going to wind this in because I just put a lead on it. I can't believe that. See if I can get him to take this scarfish. Well, well, well. If I wind, it swings the bait up, but I have got a lead on that. But I just look back there. There he is, here he is. Here he comes, he's coming for the float. He's coming for the float. He's turned, he's seen the bait, he's seen the bait, he's seen the bait, he's going for it. He has yummed it down, and I've yummed him on the hook. <laughs> OMG! He does not like. Oh my god. What a run! Oh my god. Get down off the top, Graham, at your age. What the heck? I didn't know he did, but I think it was a Mako. What a run off a fish. Maybe this fish is bigger than I thought. What? Someone's eating him. What a run. I'll take the clicker off. Wow, that was blistering, guys, to say the least. That was a blistering run. Well, well, I... If that's... Don't make me come up there, Smith. Just about to move, and I just see it. Two and a half miles offshore, blue sharks cruising. I think he's bigger than I thought. I think he's big as that uh, that giant, the beast I hooked earlier. He actually came up. He was going to he was going to bite the float. That shark, hundred percent. I'm going to bing it off, guys, just so I get short battery. Because I'm drifting through a band of wrecks here, I just hope I don't get picked up on that pot line over there. I put this one down, I wait for this. 25 fathoms. I'm looking for a thresher, a mako, or a pool beagle that might be hunting over those wrecks. But even in here, it just shows you the blues come in. Secretly sneaking in 
quietly, unaware that four people on the beach should be shivering. Well, they will do come September because the water temperature is going to go down. Oh, God. They wonder why we go shark fishing. Check the bend out in the rod. I put the hat on. I put the lucky hat on. Get yourself one. Put the lucky hat on and then spotted that fish. Well, I don't know how much lead I've got here. Probably enough to strangle myself with. It's going to be a good fish when it starts turning the boat. I'm going to alter that angle for you boys. I don't know what you're getting, it's all guesswork. Where's Michael when you need him? Getting closer, there's a trace. This is a fresh fish, this one. Gotta be careful with this one, boys. Gloves. Thinking of bringing him in for tagging. But. Danger lurks in every corner on a boat. First, shake the bag in case his uncle's around. Okay, take a gamble. Get of this one, hopefully, get something. Oh, really? Microphone's definitely shafted on the other one. I'm gonna try and get the fish back. There's not much I can do to lift him, and I do not want to get bitten. Oh. Ah. Ah. I'm gonna sleep in the car tonight. No idea what these jeans are gonna smell like. I'm done. Oh, sharks in a row. That was some fight on that one, I'm telling you, boys. Oh, I need one of these supports on each arm, one on each knee, and one around my brain to keep it in place. Well, don't seem to be drifting very far. The flag's up there where I uh, hooked that last shark. Uh, 200 yards, 200 yards in a very short time. You have to make do with the sound on this. I can't risk using the GoPro now. I've had the mic in the salt water. Otherwise, I could be talking like this and it comes out, which is pretty stupid. So, I've had some couple of more nice white in to keep most of the bait as well. And um, I'm not going to run out outside. I think I'm going to call it quits and have an early afternoon, a late afternoon. I don't want to be going in. I'll never go in early. But don't forget, I've been on the go since five o'clock this morning. So I'm really tired of towing the boat down, getting set up, launching it, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just sit it out here because I'm right in the middle of a band of wrecks. I'm just sort of on the inside of them. But I mean, hey ho, that shark was just up there like a half a mile. So I'm going to have a cup and see what happens, obviously. Nothing will happen for the moment, but as soon as I pour it into the tea bag, it could get rough. You'll be the first to know. Here comes the shark. All on waiting.
just dropping off the sleep guys. Now the fish hooked up right on last knockings. It absolutely screened off. I don't think it's a big fish. My god, I thought it was a small make or a small pool wiggle, but it is a it's a small blue. That's not that small. I'd given it up with the ghost because it's close to shore. The only benefit would be the tides picked up. It is indeed a blue shark. Hopefully you've seen this one guys. There we go guys! Ugh. Gonna get him back because that's the type of one that can bite you. Gone. I've shut the barb on that hook as well, a lot easier. Ooh. Man, six sharks. 15 minutes left and I'm going in for a beer. Do you know what? I think I deserve it. Well, I've done nine hours out here drifting on the ocean now. Got to get in and uh, get myself sorted out. So, brilliant fishing, didn't get it on the pen rod. Hey ho, you can't get everything. But I had a couple of other small, you know, small sharks that would have been absolutely ideal on that pen rod. But as soon as you put it in the water, you, you need to target that fish individually. There's absolutely no point in using it if I can't see the size of fish I'm going to hook. And you saw when I start getting fish like that really big one, pointless putting it in the water, pointless. I will return on that one. So the book is not closed on the Penrod Challenge. I think you've seen a few fish here. I've certainly had some exhausting fun out on the briny. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to watch Mike's TA Outdoors going nuts, I don't know what it is, 470,000 subscribers, and hit that little bell, the thing that Mike keeps telling me to tell everybody, hit the subscribe, but most important, hit the little bell, that way you don't have to go searching for our films, you just get a little bing bong on your phone as I understand it, and it tells you, look, a new TA film is up, failing that, look on our playlist, and don't forget, lucky hats, I just, I lost that fish on that pen rod. I should have put the hat on. I should have put the hat on. Put the hat on. Start catching fish. We'll see you next time. Could be on the river. I don't know. The boat. The beach. Could be anywhere. Totally awesome. We'll see you next time.